Hey guys, Mr. Enyard here. I want to take you through the mid-module assessment for module one in grade six. This obviously isn't the real test, otherwise I'd be giving you answers, but it is a way to better equip yourself with knowledge and information on how to solve problems and use thinking strategies so that you are ready for the actual mid-module assessment. So I uh, hope this helps. Try to work everything out before I do and see if you can, and then check your answers with mine as you go. All right. Good luck. So here we go with the mid-module assessment, grade six, module one. The real assessment will have modified numbers and changes, but I'll take you through this one so you can see um, how we would go about answering this question. So the key to this one, of course, after you read it, is to understand that this number is just the size shoe. It's just a box of shoes, a pair of shoes at this size, okay? So if I ordered, a total number of 50 shoes, 50 pairs of shoes, so 50 boxes, right? I would have eight of them that are size eight and a half. The other 42 would have to be sizes that are not eight and a half. And then if I ordered 100, I'd have 16 size eight and a half. If I ordered 150, I'd have 24 size eight and a halves. And if I had 200 boxes of shoes, I would have 32 boxes that are size eight and a half. So what is the ratio of size eight and a half shoe to the orders of total numbers of shoes? And I'm going to mark this because it's very important to understand what number goes first. The first number in my ratio must be from this side. So if I start with eight that I took from right here, what does that go to total? All right, 50. So 8 is my, we're just going to put an S for size 8 and a half, and then we're going to put a T for total. But can this be simplified? I always want to simplify my ratios. Can both of those numbers be divided by something? Absolutely. They can both be divided by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 50 divided by 2 is 25. So 4 to 25 is my actual ratio of size 8 and a half shoes to total numbers. I pulled that from the table by reading carefully what each column meant and noticing the relationship between each row. Eight goes with 50. And since this question asked for this column first, I had to write it at the beginning. And the second part of the description was this, so I had to write it at the end. And then I always want to simplify. Now before I continue with the graph, we need to remember that graphs all have a few things. They all have a title, so I'm going to be writing the title right here. They all have a label for the y-axis and a label for the x-axis, which would be what I have right up here, the headers. So I can copy them or I can shorten them. And then you can really place it however you want. You can place it um, by uh, this being x and this being y, or you can do it based on this one, which would have x being size 8.5 and, and y being total. Um, I'm going to use the table since it's already set up and in line. It already has my ordered pairs. 50 goes with 8, 100 with 16, 150 with uh, 24, and then 200 went with 32. So now you can see I have put in my title. I just decided to name it size eight and a half shoe orders. That's what this graph's going to tell you about. This side, my y that I'm getting from this part of my table is my number of size eight and a half orders. And the x axis, which I'm getting from here, is the total number of shoe orders. So now I have to figure out how to number them. And this gives you a big clue. Um, I can number my size eight and a halves by fours, or I can number my, uh, and I can number my total shoes by 25s. That's not gonna, you know, once I get to 200, that's gonna be pretty quick. That'll probably take up like this much of my graph. I can spread it out a little bit, but you know, 25s, I'm not gonna fit 200 if I go by fives. So um, the fours, I could probably go by twos, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to 32. I will get to 32. I mean, I should have more than 16 lines, I think. But I'm going to go ahead and just use this ratio to number my graph. So the 4 represents size 8.5 shoes. So I'm going to number this by 4s. And I'm going to number this by 25s. And I'm going to start at 0 right here. 
And I'm picking that based on my simplest ratio. And so now looking at my graph, you can see that these numbers represent my y-axis, which is my size 8.5, and, and these are my total shorter. So now I just have to plot my points. And remember, my points were right up here. These are my ordered pairs. So this is x, this is y, so this is 50 across, right, because it's x, y, so it's 50 across, 8 up. So I go down to my graph. I'm going to go to 50, which is right here. So I go 50 across, and then I'm going to go up 8, so where 50 and 8 intersect. And then I just draw a dot there, and I can, you know, just boom. And then continue to do that with the rest of my ordered pairs. So I've got 100 to 16. I've got 150 to 24. And I have 232. So at this point, all I want to do is connect the dots. So I've now connected my dots. You can see there's 50 to 8, 100 to 16, 150 and 24, and then 200 to 32. And now I can go back and answer my question. How many of the size 8.5 shoes would there be if I ordered 125? So I go to 125 and I follow it up to the line right here, and it looks like it hits right at 20. So I can mark that point down if I want to mark that point down. It's going to be a big dot. Yep. And then off to the side, I can write my statement. And there you have all that you need for the graph. We've got the title, the labels, the numbers according to the original ratio, set up x and y with the table up there, my ordered pair is written, and a statement that answers the question. If I really want to go above and beyond and prove it, I can write my 4 to 25 ratio and find an equivalent ratio where my total, because this was my total, this was my size 8.5, right, becomes 125. Well, 125 divided by 25 is 5. So I am multiplying 25 by 5, which means what do I have to multiply 4 by? Times 5, and that is 20. So my ratio at 125 total shoes to 8.5 would be 125 to 20, or from 8.5 to, to total would be 20 to 125. So my graph shows that. All right, so for this problem, I'm going to let you read it, pause the video, and I went ahead and drew a 3 to 7 tape diagram since it does ask me to make a table graph or tape diagram to justify my answer. Now, my original ratio was 3 to 7, so I always like to do that, and that's boys to girls. And then it gives me this 200 number, 200 more girls than boys. So let's just take a second and think, what does that mean? If I have 200 more girls than boys... Wouldn't that mean that my number of girls minus my number of boys would be 200? Where in the diagram do you see more girls than boys? Not here, not here. Here it's still the same, but look here. From here on, I have more girls than boys. So these four blocks are what really represents my 200. So I have 200 broken into four blocks. Wouldn't that be 200 divided by 4? Yep. So if I had 200 divided by 4, wouldn't that be 50? So each of these blocks is 50. And therefore, what is every other box? Yep, they're all equal, so they have to be 50 as well. So on top, I've got three 50s. So my boys is 150 if I had 200 more girls than boys. And I could show that over here by adding how many more girls than boys I see in just this ratio. Well, in 7 minus 3, 4. And wouldn't that represent girls minus boys? And I'm going to continue this to make equivalent ratios. The 4 is turning to 200 because that also represents more, more girls than boys. And since that is times 50, that's what I have to apply here and to the 7, which makes that 150 and then 350. And I can check it. 
is 350 minus 150, 200? Yes, it is. So I'm done. All right, also for the sake of time, feel free to pause this and read it yourself um, and try and do it. But what I'm doing is I'm making these ratio tables because I think they're going to help me because I'm comparing a before and an after or a proposal and what it normally is. So you'll see this one as the normal and this one as the proposed. And the normal was 13 minutes to 47 minutes of show, and that's commercial to show time, which of course gives you one hour. And since these are in minutes, right, these are in minutes, I'm going to go ahead and give my answer in minutes instead of hours. I'm going to put it in 60, 60 minutes. And doesn't 13 plus 47 equal 60? Oh, yes. Now the proposed is three commercial minutes to every seven showtime minutes, which is on only 10 total minutes. So to compare them, I have to have the same total time. So I need this to get to 60. Well, how do you get from 10 to 60? Times six. Seven times six is? 42. And three times six is? 18. And if you add 42 and 18, don't you get 60 minutes? So now I want to make sure I answer the question appropriately, which is which one, I'm going to make a statement on which one has fewer commercials for two hours. So let's go ahead and find those numbers. Two hours is 120 minutes. So everything times two. So that's 36 commercials, that's uh, minutes of commercials, that's 84 minutes of show. This would be 26 minutes of commercials, and this would be 94 minutes of show. So I would say I would definitely choose this show the normal way because I only get 26 minutes of commercial, and I get 94 minutes of show time in two hours. This one only gives, gets me 36 minutes of commercial, but only 84 minutes of the actual show in 120 minutes or two hours. So my statement could read, I'll choose the normal way because I get fewer commercials and more showtime. And then I highlighted it to show my work, that 26 minutes is less than 36. Everything's labeled. Everything's clear and obvious. So this should get me an A. All right. Hope that helped.